Hey, welcome to Tinker's Venture, I'm Kai. In my previous video, EcoFlow Delta 2 for Overlanders, I said the biggest disadvantage of all power stations compared to a dual battery is the lack of fast car charging. Most of them only charge at around 100 watt. It is not because the power stations could not pull more, but it's due to the current limit of these 12 volt sockets. Many vehicles are equipped with a factory 110 volt inverter for AC charging, but there are some practical issues, which we will review later. Yes, you can do solar, but for vehicle dependent expeditions, solar is only a good supplement. When there is not enough sunlight, I want to always be able to rely on the alternator. That is why the more serious overlanders still spend all the effort hardwiring a secondary battery with the DC to DC charger. However, after I post my last video, a few viewers suggested that I could use a DC power supply to simulate a solar panel. Basically, fast car charging through the solar port. That was brilliant, and I love learning new things from you guys. But making it work on my EcoFlow Delta 2 wasn't very straightforward. So I'll take you through exactly what's involved. Power equals voltage times current. A real solar panel has a unique current to voltage relationship. Most newer power stations have MPPT charge controllers. They will automatically pick the optimal current and voltage combination to maximize power. That is why it is called maximum power point tracking. But we're not interested in a real solar panel. We want to simulate one with a power supply, which doesn't have this IV relationship. So in this case, for a given voltage, the maximum power point is simply to draw as much current as possible. For the Delta II, it is capped at 15 amp. Therefore, if we increase the voltage, the power will increase linearly until we reach 500 watt at 33 volt. We can continue to increase the voltage up to 60 volt, but starting at 33 volt, the current will decrease and the total power is capped at 500 watt. So the key to faster car charging is higher voltage. To achieve that, I use a Victron DC to DC converter. This is a little different from a DC to DC charger used in a dual battery setup, which I'll explain later. The converter takes an input around 12 volts and boosts it to a higher regulated voltage. For this model, the output is adjustable between 20 to 30 volt. I set it at 30, which should give me around 450 watt. The rated current is 20 amp across all voltages. The EcoFlow will pull 15, so we have a 25% margin. I also ordered some new XD60 connectors for the solar input. But when I turned it on, it only charged at around 240 watt, which is 8 amp instead of 15. So what's going on? After some digging, I realized I actually need an XD60i connector that has an extra contact. This tells the Delta II to enable the 15 amp max current for a solar panel. Otherwise, it will treat it as car charging and limit it to 8 amp, as you can see from the app. Yes, even if you have a 60 volt input without the correct connector, it will still only pull 8 amp. This is probably unique to power stations that use the same port for both car and solar inputs. The confusing thing is, the factory car charging cable is also an XC60i, but the internals of this one is wired differently. Yeah, it was weird, so I won't confuse you with more details, but don't expect to cut this one off and make it work. XC60i connectors are much more difficult to source. From my experience, the best way is just getting this solar charging cable, and this XC60i is already set up the way we want. I included links to all items in the video description. With the correct connector, I finally got about 410 watt. The converter outputs 30 volt at open circuit, but drops to 28 under load. Victron did mention this in the datasheet, so it was normal. Nevertheless, I am more than happy with what I got. The red arc charger for my dual battery was 375 watt, so this charges plenty fast for my application. One important thing to note is that although the output current is 15 amp, at the input, it is over 30. This is because we still had the same 410 watt power. We just trade between voltage and current. Ideally, I should mount the converter as close to my alternator as possible, so I could use thinner gauge wire throughout. 
but since I already have thick wire routed for my secondary battery, I simply reused the wiring and mounted the converter back here. A neat feature of this Victron converter is a built-in trigger. I just need to route a thin signal wire to ignition or a switch to turn the units on and off. If you don't have this feature, you should wire a relay at the input, so it doesn't drain your starter battery when the car is off. And at last, I added a 40 amp circuit breaker at the input. Now, what are some alternatives to this Victron DC converter? The first option is using an AC inverter to charge through 110 volt. I wish I could use my Toyota 400 watt factory inverter, so I don't need to wire anything. But too bad it didn't work. This is because the Delta II requires a pure sine wave with distortion rate 10% or less, and the Toyota one doesn't meet that requirement. So depending on your vehicle and power station, you may still need to hardwire an aftermarket inverter. But the more fundamental issue is most power stations have AC pass-through. So while charging, all AC load will be drawn from the charging inverter instead of the battery. If we only size an inverter for charging, we could easily overload it by accident. So unless you plan to go for a big inverter, given your alternator can handle that, I will stick with DC charging, which is more accident proof and more efficient. Now in the DC category, I found quite a few posts mentioning one specific model. This 15 amp smart charger, also by Victron. It has 5 amp less capacity than this converter, but it costs $100 more. That unit is more similar to my old Redarc DC to DC charger. Those chargers are for charging regular batteries like these. These batteries are dumb and can be overcharged, so we need a smart charger to go through the proper charging profile based on the battery state of charge. An all-in-one power station already have a smart charge controller built in, so all we need is a dumb power supply. Its only job is to maintain a constant voltage while supplying the current the power station tries to pull. We only need one brain controlling the whole thing. And at last, how about these dirt cheap Amazon Specials converter? They are more compact, shockproof, and waterproof. Aren't they just a better options for 4x4 off-roaders? That's what I thought. So I actually started with this one a 12 to 24 volt converter with a 20 amp rated current. I got 350 watt charging power, which is still pretty good. But the issue I have is the warm and fuzziness of its specification. Let me explain. A name brand like Victron Energy gives you a definitive spec sheet. The 20 amp current rating means continuous current, and there is a separate max instantaneous current. The operating temperature refers to that of the environment, not the device itself. So for me, as long as the interior of my FJ stays below 55C, pretty reasonable, I can always count on this inverter because Victron already did the homework in heat transfer. On the other hand, our Amazon special Megi rates the unit for 20 amp, but it says, cannot use long time under the max listed low power. Choose the twice bigger ampere than your machine need is perfect. Okay, I'm using 15 amp, so I'm kind of in a gray area. The 85C max operating temperature seems really high, but at a closer look, it says case operating temperature, which refers to the device itself. After charging for an hour, this converter reached 68 degrees C in an 18 degree room. Because this unit does not have active fan cooling like this one, it gets hot to the touch very quickly. Now, if it was a hot summer day inside my car, would it overheat? Uh, maybe? That's the issue with warm and fuzzy specification. I tried to look for more documentation from Maggie, but oh wait, they actually specialize in advanced leather products and also sells dumpling makers? It was at this point, I decided it was not worth the risk to save a hundred bucks. I only have one FJ to burn down. Victron also sells this type of waterproof converter, just not in the size I need. But look at how clear Victron's datasheet is. They even have a detailed document explaining how operating temperature affects device rating. 
so you understand exactly what's going to happen. This kind of confidence is what you miss from a cheap white label product. Nevertheless, if you are charging at the lower power or just feeling lucky, I left the links to both converters in the video description. In my last review, I stated although the Delta II has so many benefits, it still couldn't replace my secondary battery due to the lack of fast car charging. But now, my old setup is gone and I have a more powerful and much cleaner all-in-one solution. Now, if you wonder why I choose Delta II specifically over countless other power stations, go watch this video right now. Thank you for watching, I will see you in the next one.